Hi, welcome to this short video on refining your structural model with structural drops, cantilevers, and openings. Um, but why do that? What is the reason for engineers to want to model with such accuracy? Traditionally, engineers only need to create an idealized wireframe model for analysis and some sort of design. However, those are great, but you can't use them for creating drawings, designing your floor openings, quantifying structural costs, or communicating with anybody else but engineers, right? So the main reasons for engineers to model with such accuracy are, firstly, particular structural designer will analyze and design what you have modeled automatically according to the code. Secondly, it will produce scaled structural key plans and details which can be used for tender purposes or simply to improve drawing production. Thirdly, it is easy to do. And the next reason is you don't have to delete or redo any object or start from scratch. All you need to do is to modify what you've already built. This way you can keep the rest of your model intact. For example, you may have spent a lot of time detailing all your loadings, such as brick wall, partition loads, live loads, equipment loads, but those will be kept intact and you don't have to sacrifice your design groupings or analysis settings. In other words, what you're doing is simply refining your structural model with the latest architectural information and details as you receive them. Lastly, you can make use of the accurate models to communicate and collaborate with architects, mechanical and electrical engineers, owners, and other stakeholders, um, either in 2D or um, through BIM. So there are plenty of reasons for engineers to want to build an accurate model. So now let me show you how. Let's start by making some changes to the slab, um, slab level. So we can drop or raise the level. So if I select this slab here, and we will change um, where it sits on the floor, I can turn on the override slab drop command over on the left of the in the property box. And when you tick it, two additional controls uh, are available for you to um, create your settings. One is um, you can change your slab depth. Um, right now it is at 200 mm. You can change it. Um, or if you just want to drop the slab, all you need to do is add a positive measurement or a negative measurement. So if I want to drop by 150 mm, I can just specify 150. All right. And you can probably spot the difference. So that's the top of the beam, and this is where the slab is. And if you compare to the slab adjacent to it, it's at a different level. Now, if you want to see it more clearer, you can introduce cutting planes so that you can cut across um, the slab. So for example, over here, um, I can simply push it, push it further. Okay, so you can clearly see that there's a drop in the slab right now. Now, what if I want to not drop the entire slab, but just half of the slab or parts of the slab? Well, you can do something called um, a slab split. So um, why do you want to do that? Is well, you don't have to delete the slab in case you have already created all the loadings requirement um, in that slab. So you don't have to remove them altogether. So what you need to do is break the slab into the panels that you need. So you can snap to any point. So for example, only this part of the slab needs to be um, changed. What I can do is snap to it and then repeat the process. And in this slab, maybe I want to raise it by 150 instead of dropping it. So then you can see instantly right, this slab has been raised. So I'm not removing anything. I'm just refining my slab um, levels at this point. All right. So um, if I want to do a beam drops, um, what I can do is, for example, if I select this particular beam, every beam will uh, be provided with three panels. So there is a blue dot that you can see and one in the mid span and two at the ends. So what you can do 
if you want to split and segmentize your beam so that you can drop it where you need it. For example, I want to drop the beam where the slab has a different um, uh, level. So I can select and specify this position where I will break my beam into two separate segments. So now I can actually select um, segment 2 of IB2 beam. And then what I can do now is go to alignment. And I can now drop 150. And on this side, uh, I'm going to change the beam size. So you can change it to any size you want. Okay. Now, why I'm doing that is because I want to keep the soffit of the beam flush. All right, like so. All right, only the top of the beam uh, has been dropped. Okay, so this is how you can create beam drops anywhere along a singular beam. And this beam, when you analyze it, is still considered a continuous single span element. All right, so it will be detailed accordingly um, with drop detailing um, when you produce the design drawings as well. The next thing I want to show you in with regards to the drops are the column drops. So over here you can see that there are three commands that can be performed. So the first one is the column drop. Alright, so column drop meaning that um, you might call it a drop panel where you, you practice. Um, you can specify the size of your column drop or the drop panel over here. So you can change it to any size you want. Right, but specifically, it should be one quarter or one half uh, of your slab uh, span. So over here, I'm just going to keep it to the same size. All right, maybe what I'll do is I'll increase the depth to one meter to exaggerate it so you can see. It. So now I'm ready to insert. And what it says here is create a column drop by picking a point. So that's what I'm going to do. So when you hover over a column, um, a orange dot will appear, which means you're allowed to select that point. So where you hover over a point where there's no column, you're not able to select it, right? So this is very easy. All I need to do is select the column that I want to introduce the drop. And now you can see the drop being introduced, all right? If you want to change it at any time, all you need to do is select the drop one more time. Um, you can remove it. Um, you can even create a vertical offset to the drop if the slab has also been dropped, right? Um, so all these you can do it or I can just change it back to something um, shallower, okay? And if I don't want the column uh, drop, I can remove it completely. So over here, remove, and it's gone. Okay, here you see there's a slab opening. So in order for us to create a structural key plan that's a coding that can be used, then it's actually important to create the slab openings directly. So um, you can just pick, if you have an architectural key plan, you can trace over the opening. And if I want to change the opening to a circular opening, um, I can just do the same here. All right. And if you use function F2, you can actually specify um, the offsets. So I can now specify 0.2 exact location. All right. And be done with that. Again, if you want to make further changes, all you need to do is select that opening. And here you can make further changes. Increase the size, for example. Okay. And whatever you do here, you can actually see that has been introduced uh, in the 3D view as well. Okay, the next thing that uh, you might be interested to find out um, is how to introduce something like a balcony uh, or a cantilever slab overhanging the structure. So, for example, for these thick aircon ledges. Okay, so you use this slab overhang. Okay, and you can specify the size 
of um, the cantilever slab. So, for example, I want to use a 1.2 meter uh, cantilever, and I can basically snap and insert it any point here. All right, and pick another point to insert that slab, and that's done. Okay. And similarly to what we've done earlier on with uh, dropping the slab, if this um, cantilever slab is a downhang from the beams, right, like what most uh, aircon ledges are, what you can do is you can actually select it and then again click on the override slab desk and introduce um, the depth here. Okay, so the beam size is only what's the beam size 250 by 500 so if i need to introduce if i want to keep the soffit of the slab and the beam aligned i can only introduce a 300 drop all right so that's done but however if you want to lower the icon ledge further the other way to catch it that can't even step is to increase your beam depth so that can also be done so if i increase the beam depth and now I can drop a further 450 and so so that can be easily introduced all right so as you can see here I'm not um, changing the entire model I'm not deleting any existing information I'm just refining it as I go um, so once I have something like this I can start to produce uh, what we call our structural plans. So you don't have to open uh, any uh, draw drafting software at this point. Um, you can actually view your structural key plan right where you are. Okay. So obviously I've not adjusted any of the settings in terms of uh, the font size, which you can adjust in the drawing settings up here. All right. So all these can be set. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to help you communicate better with your um, CAT operator or your um, uh, drafter um, so that they don't have to guess what is your uh, structural requirement from your calculation or from your sketches. You can actually deliver um, in a 2D drawing format for them to see. And the other thing I can do now is, I uh, remember I um, introduced a beam drop earlier on, okay? So I can actually show uh, how the beam looks like by creating the drawings right away. And this time, I'll just uh, use whatever CAD software that I have uh, on my computer. Um, for you, it could be AutoCAD, or for some others, it could be other type of CAD system. And as you can see, it's very important that um, we are able to show um, exactly what have been modeled. So for example, um, that beam, um, you can see the white line is representing the RC beam. And we're also be able to see the slab profile, which is in pink, right? So all this is done according to how you model your structural uh, system inside Tecla Structural Designer. Now I've only shown you um, the geometry drawing. So later on, once we've done the analysis and design, you'll also see the rebar details, including all the lapping, all the curtailments, and all the anchorage required by the code. Okay. So um, over here, whatever drawings that's produced, all the layers are available. So if you do not want to see the slab, you can switch it off. But if you only want to see the slab, you can also switch off the beam elements. All right, so you can get the slab profile easily. Okay, so all these can be controlled by the engineer um, in whatever CAD system or CAD software that they are currently using. Okay, so. That's how, um, that's, that's all for now. That's what I want to show you. And thank you for tuning in. There's one last thing to mention. For those who are interested in uh, interrupting with uh, other stakeholders via BIM or uh, in specifically through Autodesk software, um, do 
take note that uh, all the drops, cantilevers and flap openings will be captured during the export so um, all the stakeholders will be able to see um, your structural model as you've built it and you can download our techline integrator for um, Autodesk Revit from our website it's free of charge and also uh, for BCA BIM e-submission please check out my other videos also available on this channel thank you